Blair, and welcome to the Loaf of Bread GA podcast, slicing into the GA of the past, present, and future. Join me, Jason Keelan, as we cut into the largest loaf of bread known to mankind. On Slice 18 this week, I have the pleasure of welcoming three members of the Carlo Ladies football team. Sports Dance Team of the Year 2020 star Clean and Ishe, Carlo Ladies Captain 2021 Avon Gilmartin, and 2009 Team of the Year Division 4 and Carlo Legend Adele Hayden. We chat everything from trips to London and unexpected accommodations, the loss of the Mullins family from the county board, my terrible pronunciations of the places in Carlo, the club rivalries between the girls' different clubs, Avian's Twitter push for Cleanest Team of the Year award, and finding out who it was who put the fingerprints all over Adele's new house after the 2017 final celebrations. But first, let's take our traditional weekly trip to the girls' home clubs and their county, and check out the beautiful County Carlo. Bon Sultos. This week, we travel down from the tip-top of County Antrim to the southeast direction of Ireland, to the banks of the River Barrow and County Carlo. The County of Squelga is Caherlock, which would generally mean four lakes. However, there are a few issues with this. For a start, there is no specific evidence of four lakes in the county. Many believe it is more closely linked to Kerre, from Old Irish around the 6th century, which is the word for animals and signified four-leggedness. Within Carlow lies one of the most significant samples of Old Irish history in the Browns Hill Dolmen. The structure on the Hackettstown Road outside Carlow Town shows burial chambers from before 4000 BC, while also having the heaviest capstone in Europe at more than 100 tonnes. Although the county's primary nickname is the Barrow Ciders from the river, there are two other names associated with Carlow. Firstly, the Scallion Eaters. History tells of how the growth of the famous onion in Leinster was done primarily in Carlow. Scallion growers often split their land in four, with one section dedicated to the so-called crop that never dies. Potatoes, barley and clover often made up the other sections. And so the nickname stuck, and even though it isn't as commonly used today, the Carlow people surely enjoy that they can rival neighbours, Wexford, who are famed for their strawberries and spuds. The other nickname is the Fighting Cocks. This comes from the 19th century history of Carlow being the cockfighting centre of Ireland. Today, passing along the N80, you will find the Fighting Cocks pub, which was central to the action of the time. Down the road you will find the aptly named Fighting Cocks GA Club. Given that the sport is illegal here in Ireland, the name is in memory only. Although anyone interested, I've witnessed it happening in Myanmar where it's also illegal. It's a bit of a drive, mind you though. Another of the sites of Carlow is the 13th century Carlow Castle, built for the Earl of Ulster, Hugh de Lacey, on the banks of the Barrow. Unfortunately today, not all parts of the castle remain, but what does is a great example of Irish history. In terms of people, Carlow has produced some iconic figures over time. Engineer William Dargan was not just responsible for making Carlow one of the first places in Ireland to be connected by rail to Dublin, but also many of the major rail lines in Ireland and some other works including the operating of some mills in my own school community of Chapel Lizard in Dublin. Dargan's success and importance is found in many of the place names today, not least the Dargan Bridges for the train in Belfast and the Lewis Bridge in Dundrum, County Dublin. Others include Irish rugby international star the Tullow Tank himself, Sean O'Brien, who has, ironically, also lined out for the famous Fighting Cox GA in past years. TV star Catherine Thomas, Oscar-winning actress Saoirse Ronan, Mr Harry Kyo, creator of the Rooster Potato, and League of Ireland and English FA Cup star Padraig Amund, all hail from the county. Slightly obscure links to the county include Elvis Presley, whose ancestors hail from Hackettstown, where an annual Elvis festival is held. And also the iconic Walt Disney can trace his relatives to Ballyloo in the county. In fact, the name Disney originally started as Disney. Today, George, May and Abigail Disney are all buried in the cemetery in the area. Finally, for anyone who's old enough to remember, here's this Carol man. On the sporting side, Carlo is often mentioned for the iconic lollipop multicolour jersey. Well, this can be linked back to a man already mentioned in some form, William Dargan. The All Ireland Junior Final of 1933 saw Carlo in their traditional red and green against Mayo in their traditional red and green. Carlo for the day wore blue, and many fans who travelled on Dargan's Great Southern Railway to the game in Athlone will remember the blue jersey. After the defeat, 
Carlo took the original colours back but decided to add in a yellow stripe to create the famous strip that we see today. On a side note, Mayo won that game with what is perhaps one of the first recorded uses of the famed blanket defence. At club level, the likes of Air Rogue in football and Mount Leinster Rangers have grown to become familiar names in the Leinster and All-Ireland ranks. Rangers won the 2012 All-Ireland Intermediate title in hurling and followed this up with the Leinster Senior title the following year and then an incredible All-Ireland Senior final appearance in 2014. Air Rogue won Leinster titles in 92, 93, 95, 96 and 98 but wouldn't appear in the final again until 2019. Another Carlow club, O'Hanrahan's, also tasted Leinster success in 2000. On the ladies' side, some wonderful players have emerged to wear the county jersey, and the last few years of the decade saw success with Carlow winning a Leinster junior title in 2017, and O'Loughlin a Leinster junior club title. Avon Gilmartin's team are in fact O'Loughlin, and in recent weeks she has been named as county captain, making her one of the youngest captains in the country. Her father, Bart, has a great history with the county and club, having managed and coached at both levels. Avine and O'Loughlin completed a county senior three in a row in 2020. These were their first titles since 1999. Despite her age of just 21, Avine already has a glittering career. She's been on the panel since the age of 16 and operates across many positions on the field. Along with her three county titles with her club, Avine also has a Division 1 league medal in the O'Connor Cup with UCD. And alongside Avian in 2021 is vice captain Clean Nishe from Benekerry, Tin Ryland. Like Avian, Clean is five years on the panel. In 2017, Clean was named on the Little Division 4 Team of the Year, and more recently found a spot on the Sportsdaz 2020 Team of the Year. And finally, Air Rogues Adele Hayden. Adele's commitment to both club and county is recognised widely, not just in her own county, but around the GA circles. In 2019, her selection on the Little Division 4 Team of the Year was some recognition for all the service she has given over the years. Adele is also a prominent member of the Carlo Coyotes Rugby Club. In 2019, she lined out for Rogue in the County Intermediate Final against Ratvilly, where perhaps her importance was more noted than ever. With Air Rogue firmly in control, Adele suffered a severe ACL injury and the game changed. Air Rogue managed to draw in the end thanks to 1-1 each from Leona Kelly and Casey Tobin. Adele is currently in the final stages of the recovery from the ACL and we can't wait to see her back to winning ways again soon. So let's meet the stars themselves. Air Rogue's Adele Hayden, Benekerry Tin Ryland's Clean and Ishe, and Old Lachlan's Avon Gilmartin. Well Adele, how are things? Good, how are you? Not too bad, yeah. Just uh, just about a life. <laughs> How's all yeah. down in Carlo? Sure, not too bad. Yeah, Try you, not to go mental now with lockdown. But. Yeah, I have a few friends down there, and then I've some in a in a tie, but they claim to be Kildare people, not Carlow people. So, oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to make of them now, but uh, yeah. How's um? What's the lockdown like down there? Yeah, it's okay. Like it's just there's there's only so many places I suppose you can go, you know. Yeah. And then um. Yeah, no, it's grand, but sure, you have every place, like, between Oak Park and the park and kind of um, Juckwood's Grove and stuff, sure, you have them done a hundred times in Milford, mm-hmm. like, so I find find this lockdown is harder than, I suppose, the first one, like, you know. Yeah. It's, um, you can't see anyone and go anywhere, then you're not yeah. working either. Like. See, Fitness I only got my ACL done there, did, like, this last month. All I right. got my ACL done, so I can't even, like, you know, go for long walks or anything like that. Yeah. I can only basically stay in the house. Or I can't drive yet. So will I be back driving hopefully next week? Jeez. How long uh, How long are you out with that? Too Let's long, says you. <laughs> if I can make the call. I've done my other one, like, so before, <laughs> three years ago, like, I've done one and then i done this one then uh, last year. Last, last year. So I was just waiting to get it done. So hopefully I'll be back when this is all over. Um, yeah, cheers. When it's starting back, hopefully I'll be back. I don't know. But Did the ACL... Was the ACL in a match or was it in training or was it... No, it was in a match in the county final. Club All right. life. All right. And then, <laughs> it wasn't even... There's no one even on me. I just turned and that was it. Well, the girl had kicked the ball, but it went kind of off a bit and when I went to turn, then it was gone. And it was yeah. straight away after. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Are we cleaning you well? Good, yeah, and yourself? 
Uh, sure, I complain, but nobody, nobody will listen anyway. So what's the point? <laughs> I'm after listening for the f- past ten minutes to you there. So <laughs> yeah, I suppose the first you did actually. Yeah, you, you didn't complain about me once, which is good. So yeah, <laughs> how are you, Avi? Well, good, Jason. How are you? Ah, uh, sure, I'm all right. Yeah, not too bad. How's all down in Carlo? Um, I'm actually in Dublin, but are you? Um, Whereabouts in Dublin yeah. are you? Um, I live just beside UCD. Uh, so, oh yeah. Um, Oh yeah, I was I used to live at the other side. I was in uh, Transilla till last year. So, oh yeah, yeah. I used to tip out that way to go out to Five Guys. Basically, that was my only reason to go out that oh. far. So, yeah, <laughs> Five Five Guys burgers were needed. I had to go out that far to get it because it was, it was easier to get out there than it was to get into city centre. So, and uh, clean are you in Carlo or? No, I'm in I'm in Dublin as well. You're in Dublin as well. Where about you? Uh, Fibsborough. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Pl- plenty of uh, plenty of cracker on Fisborough, right? So, so it's some yeah. it's some spot, yeah. I just said I'd I'd ask uh, ask and see if uh, Adele would come on. Then uh, then I said, sure. Look, if you want to drag any other poor souls, I'm with you. And uh, clean and Avian looks like you were the poor souls that were that were dragged on with her. So um, yeah, no, I uh, I won't take up uh, too much your evening. And uh, yeah, the first uh, first thing I've asked everybody who's come on is uh, who your influences were growing up. So Adele, I suppose you were the you were the guinea pig who got the message first. So I'll have to ask you first. So oh you're very kind. Yeah. Um probably my biggest influence is obviously my daddy because um he was playing from a young age like so we were kind of brought up in the family of footballers. So we kind of had nothing other than football to be going to or, or that. So he was probably my biggest influence. Yeah. Yeah, definitely yeah. Uh Kleena, what about yourself? Um, well, like probably my older brother, as in like when like when I was younger, all I wanted to do was be outside playing football with my brother and my dad. Um, so probably him, but I would have looked up to Colin Cooper a lot when I was younger. Like I'd always watch Kerry playing and mm. he was definitely the person that I looked up to the most when I was watching like on the TV. Yeah, he wasn't a bad player, I suppose, in his day. He was, he was all right. Average, no. <laughs> average enough, I suppose, yeah. And uh, hey, you're still there, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, keep me there. Oh, you're right, you're good, you're good. That double Wi Fi is dodgy enough the best of times. So, yeah, um, who are, uh, yeah, who are yours? Think, yeah, um, I'd say my dad as well. Um, hmm. he's from Mayo, so he's very interested in football, and he actually ended up coaching the county team for two years. So, um, he always had a big influence on me playing, and um, yeah, when, when was your dad in? He was in charge of which team? Uh, Carlo Ladies. Okay, uh, when was that? Um, in 2017 and 2018. Ah, okay, so that was the name I came across. I was like, yeah, I was, I was debating whether I should start. It's like, it's like up here in Westmead, you know, every, every second name is a McCormick and you're not sure whether you should link them all together because my mother's a McCormick, surrounded by McCormicks where she's from, but none of them are related, so I didn't know whether it was a, a relative yeah. or not. Well, what was it like? Uh, well, was he any good, would you say, or was he... Uh, I suppose you can't really say um, it's too bad, can you? I suppose there was a few fights along the way, but... <laughs> Um, generally, I liked it. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. Yeah, uh, Kleena, you were recently put onto the uh, sports Dad's team of the year for 2020. I have to check my stats here. So you won the vote on Twitter by just over one percent. So was it? Yeah, uh, Avin Gilmartin's constant retweeting, or what? What got you on the line? Was. I think it was. Yeah, <laughs> it was definitely the girls. There was so much support. It was overwhelming, especially in the final, because the other two there was two like polls before that that mm. like weren't that close the final was really close and there was like even until the last minute wasn't really sure so it was really good that everyone kind of got behind it yeah no it, uh, it was really nice yeah it's, it's a big deal as well I suppose and uh, yeah I just saw when I did to it I was like because I've been following them and I just saw Avon Glenmartin has retweeted Avon Glenmartin is plugging this and I was like okay <laughs> Definitely going to win because of Avery. So, yeah, My number that's, one fan. <laughs> number one fan, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Proud of her, so. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Adele, you were on the team of the year, Division 4, 2019. Uh, what, was the, what was that year like for you now? Because I know you were bet out the door by London as well at one stage, but uh, what was, what was the year like in general? So, yeah, I was <laughs> <laughs> it, they, made, they made it sound like you were better at the door so no well now I'll come back to that one because we had a terrible we were delayed on that plane going over for how long okay. girls we didn't even get to the hotel to like half 11 at night or something and then had to try and eat dinner at that hour so lovely there was a lot now involved in that but um yeah no it was a good it was good like I know we were beaten in the end but um I suppose I have to take that with it um but yeah it was it was good a good year 
I suppose not so good in result wise, but it was a good year, I suppose, for myself. Um getting on the team of the league, like it was a good honour. And um hopefully give some of the younger girls coming up along something to aim for and um kind of to push forward. Because sometimes I think that um just being from Cardo, sometimes like we're kind of looked upon as oh like they're only junior, they're only Cardo yeah. players or whatever. But just for our younger girls, it's something for them to look up to. So I suppose just for them, like alone, it was it was good. Yes. Is there uh, is there more behind the London story, or did London have anything to do with the plane being delayed? Or <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. I'd say it was maybe in two thousand seventeen. Avian was it with the racket? We <laughs> we left over there in what was it a hostel or something? We we were in the first time. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what did you What did you um, do in twenty seventeen? You obviously wrecked the place, <laughs> did you? Um, no, so we went over that. Um, we won't say names of places or anything, but we yeah. went over that year anyway. And um, we got this lovely, lovely, lovely hotel. Um, that we thought we were staying in, of course. And when we arrived there, it was like I don't know what it was like. I don't know, Avin, can you remember? <laughs> um, yeah, well, it certainly wasn't a high quality um, accommodation anyway, but we. Did manage to beat London that year, so I suppose. Yeah, take that as a win. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. The uh, was your game the next day after the flight was delayed? Then you turned up at half eleven at night. Were you playing the next morning, like next afternoon? Yeah, next morning. Yeah. Twelve o'clock the next morning, I think it was. Oh, Jesus, so it wasn't much time. Yeah, and you have much memories of the match. There, or, actually, yeah. wasn't the same. That the same um, day, the referee, Mister Flight, I would open to referee yeah. the game. Ah, so Jesus. that delayed the game further after warming up. So, like, really and honestly, how do we have a chance at all? <laughs> and, there, and there was a gale force wind. I'd say that was the strongest wind I've ever played a match in. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, the, it's at a right, I know, I was reading through match reports. Four and a half stuff. time. Yeah. Said, said yeah. Yeah, it, said, it just said bad conditions. But then when I read into it a little bit more, it, it, it really underplayed the, the conditions. All right. Um, it sounded it sounded pretty bad. Um, yeah, at least, at least you're... You got home and at least the flight home, I'd say, wasn't delayed, probably, was it? No, it was, yeah. It was oh, it was? Delayed, so. Of course it was. That, that would, that would <laughs> be typical, yeah. Yeah. Um, what's been the, the highlight, uh, Avian, on the on the panel so far for you? Or have you any particular highlights? Um, I suppose back in 2017, um, we kind of, at the start of the year, we hadn't even really, well, we didn't know the team had been kind of struggling for a good few years to even field a team. Um, and then it kind of suddenly just came together and we had nearly, we had all the top talent from around the county in on the team. And that year we got both the league semi-final and the All-Ireland junior semi-final, um, which was just beyond what we thought was possible. And we've never done that since. So I guess looking back on that, that was probably um, the highlights for me. Deadly, yes. Clina, what about you? What's your highlight? Oh, I'd have to agree, yeah. I think, like, I remember we, like, we'd be the same age, so we would have been, like, 17 that year, and it was, like, well, it was, def- it was my first year playing on the, like, the junior team, and uh, I don't think we realised, like, how well we were actually doing, because it would have been our first time playing in the league, and we won, like, we got to the semi-final, and, like, we haven't since, and it was actually such a huge achievement, but at the time, we kind of didn't really think much of it, hmm. you know, so that, yeah, like, looking back on it, that's definitely the highlight. Brilliant, yeah. Oh, yeah. What about you, Adele? Yeah, I think 2017 was probably um, was the best year, year we've had yeah. in a long, long time. Hmm. Um, other than that, like, I can't remember. Like, I can remember for years and years, like, going to matches and you could have 13 ringing two people to try hmm. and come, like, for years and years there. And that was probably the the one year that there was so much. Like, I had went up. Um, I think I was kind of playing rugby at the time and Bart had... Avon's dad had asked me to go up and the first night I was there I was like oh my god this is this, this is so different towards what I was used to and mm. just the talent that was there like actually took me by surprise I was like oh my god these girls can play football like you know and um, yeah. um, it was just a great year we trained hard and um, everyone kind of wanted the same goal at the end of it so it was really good and getting to the semi-final of the All-Ireland I suppose and been beaten by a pint it was great like it's the best year we've had but probably disappointing as well like you know just narrowly been beaten but 
yeah, 2017 would have been my best year so far. Yeah, right, right. and uh, you were pipped just by Fermanagh um, recently enough as well. Was that just a uh, we blame the conditions for that one because it was pretty bad conditions? Watching a couple of the clips of it, would you blame the conditions or was it just on the day Fermanagh just had your number slightly, ever so slightly? Um, well, I guess the conditions are the same for both teams. So yeah, yeah it, was, it was a grand enough day for a match, I thought. Yeah, <laughs> I, think they, <laughs> I don't think we, I don't think we could blame the conditions. Okay. To do. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I feel like they were just the stronger team. Um, they had a few very talented footballers, but um, like yeah, no, I think that if we got them again, we'd have given them a better go of it, but just on the day we didn't, I suppose, perform to probably our full extent, maybe. Yeah. Even I, I, I hadn't, I wasn't at the game myself now, mm. I was injured at the time, but um, just looking at the girls, I think it was just chances, they're look, it, just with luck, because you've had the matching of them. I thought, like, is, you know, with Fermanagh going down, they probably would have looked a stronger team, but the girls really, um, gave it a lot, so I think if they did get them again, it'd be, um, it'd be a different story. Bait the heads off them next time around. I'd say yeah. <laughs> you look, you look like you're mad for mad for another go with them. Yeah. <laughs> he, um, I was just reading. I don't know um, much about these two, and you know the names. Um, Kathleen and Fran Mullins have stepped down from the LGFA after what, from reading it, it seems like their forty years of marriage has been forty years of marriage to Carlo G A. What have they brought to? Uh, what have they brought for a year? Have you much dealings with them? Yeah, no, I'm um, sorry. Uh, I'll jump back in there. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I just think it was just Kathleen, like, and Fran, they did give their service. But even with Kathleen there, I think it was just as well. Um, Health-wise, I'd say, other than that, Kathleen would probably be still there. Hmm. Um, so it's it's a pity, like, to lose someone who with so much experience because I think they've done a lot with Leinster Council as well, like, so they'll hmm. be losing valuable members there too. Yeah. What, um, what's the future like for Carlo going forward then? Um, I think there's a much better underage structure in place than we've ever had um, from both like a club and a county perspective. I feel like um, the clubs are underage clubs now. There's so many of them with loads of talented players and they're all feeding into the underage county teams. And it's really starting from a young age and it's really starting to come together. So that with um, the continued efforts of I suppose our um, junior panel will hopefully mean that the there's a bright future ahead but time will tell in that I guess. Yeah whenever we get back to the football pitch hopefully as well so at some stage yeah. so uh, at your clubs then you've uh, have you had much interaction playing against each other at club level I know I'm probably going to clean out got to apologize in advance is it Ben Benicary Tinreland is that right? Benicary <laughs> Tinreland yeah Tin Ryland, is that how you pronounce it, is it? Okay. I know I've driven past the sign many times, but I just went, oh, there's Tin Ryland. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> have, uh, have, you, have you come across uh, Adele and Avian much in your, in your club time? Yeah, sure. There wouldn't be very many clubs in Carlo, so you're playing each other at least three times a year, I'd say. Okay. So. And uh, which, uh, which club then would you be uh, most fearful of coming up against? Well, I have to say all oh, Lachlan. Okay. <laughs> At Amy's club, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, no. <laughs> no, we're not even in the same division, so it's grand. Work away there. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> uh, did the two of you come across in county final? Um, yeah. yeah. The last. The last one, yeah. Four. Last yes. four. I needed three yeah. in a row as well, Fina, didn't you, at some point? Well, we, yeah, we did three in a row, and now Dave done three in a row. Is hmm. it three? Three, yeah. Yeah, hopefully four. I won't. I won't start. I won't start around between the two of you down there. So, uh, and uh, Adel, you're at uh, Airog, isn't it? I'm Airog. Yeah. Yeah, David. I David Burke, the Wicklow manager, on um the other week, and he said the Airog men's team were the best club side he ever came up against. Uh, for a man who's yeah, got no, gone the, Ireland, the, yeah. the last few years, yeah, they have they have been doing really well, especially last year. Now they were in um, <clears throat> just pit by the Dublin side in the in the last few minutes hmm. in the Leinster final. So like they have to put in a massive effort. Like their underage structure there as well is very good, um, hmm. coming up as well. So um, they're putting in the work at the moment. It was just a pity. 
that they couldn't keep it going, kind of, you know, with the COVID and stuff mm. like that. I think they were they were on a good roll there. But um sure look, we'll just have to see. Yeah. What's the bears out now and yeah. come back, yeah. What's yeah. the ladies set up like then at Air Rogue? Well, I know you're out with the ACL, but uh, what's it like otherwise? Yeah, no, they have good structure there. Like there is um from underage, from six up, like there is mm. is teams there, like so there would be a good structure there as well. Um there's a lot of people involved on there's usually Saturday mornings. Um there's a massive um there's a massive uptake on that on a Saturday morning and all the senior players help out like men and women, I suppose, like um go down which the younger ones love as well. So mm. it's good, yeah. That's good, yes. Um any just for the trivia, I suppose it might be a, a joint kind of question. Have you any particular celebration nights that you can remember that stand out? Yeah, I do actually. Yeah. I was going to say Adele's already yeah. laughing in the corner. Fingerprint. Yeah. There was fingerprints left on my ceiling. I was only after getting a new house and had it painted lovely. And we were after winning the Leinster final in 2017. And sure, of course, sure, I was delighted after winning and asked all the girls to come back to my house, which I'll never do again. <laughs> but, <laughs> and, um, but um the next day there were there was I'm I'm blaming Amy Dooley for this by the way because there was fingerprints on my roof and she is the tallest that could reach. Well <laughs> clearly you wouldn't be too far off. So That's Amy Dooley is definitely time. getting the there's still prints up there that I can't get off. And <laughs> there was fingerprints going down my what hall walls. <laughs> there was drink everywhere the next day I think I just walked into the kitchen and literally closed the kitchen door and went straight down to Carpenters down to the bar and ordered a drink and sat there I just couldn't have the head to clean up the house after <laughs> it was just wreck. that's brilliant so I had yeah. to be fully painted again after that night anyway just so. send uh, send Amy Dooley the bill did you yeah <laughs> and yeah. Jeanette Owlin as well mopping my ceiling with a mop like I don't know <laughs> People getting sick in my front garden. <laughs> Jesus, this is, is some celebration, right? Yeah. Clean, cleaner <laughs> avian, have you uh, any, have you any memories of that night? I should nearly ask. Yeah, yeah. Great fond memories of that night. Because <laughs> yeah, it was in your house, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is there uh, any other celebrations you can remember in general? Probably um, London after our, in our first year as well, back in that lovely accommodation we were talking about earlier. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like there's yeah. stories there anyway. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> One night yeah, after. No, that was good. Any any that particular stories? A- Amy Dooley does not be involved, it's fine. Um I don't think Amy Dooley was at that one. So okay. there was no, no destruction. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Don't touch the ceilings. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> did you Marion with the crutches. <laughs> I think your dad was telling her to go to bed, Amy. Marion, I can hear you with the crutches. Go to bed. <laughs> Jeez, it, it sounds like London didn't really know what hit when uh, when Yila when Yila turned up anyway. So uh, yeah, there's uh, there's definitely good stories there. Speaking of, uh, I suppose traveling if the uh, anyway, I always ask everyone where their favorite travel places are for when all this is back to normal. Where uh, even if your favorite travel destination that you've been or want to go to. Um, well, I was actually in Australia last year when um, COVID hit, so I flew home um, <clears throat> earlier than I was planning, but. <clears throat> I'm hoping when the restrictions or the um, ease a bit that I'd be able to go back and spend a bit of time there. Cool, yeah. So. Great, great spot, yeah. What about you, Cleena? Um, Just uh, Ballyfert or just outside Dingle. Uh, my Lovely. auntie and yeah. my cousins live there, so we'd go there um, a good bit during the year, but obviously we haven't been able to with um, COVID, so yeah. I look forward to going down there to the beach. Yeah, Delhi. Great spot, yet. And uh, I suppose the two of you would have said Adele's house as well, of course, um, when all this done and dusted to go back there. <laughs> Adele, what about you? Any... I <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Adele, have you any particular places? Um, yeah, well, I, go, I was in Texas before a few years ago, so nice. that's probably, um, I'd love to go back there. It was just unreal. It was just so laid back. Now, I don't know if I'll ever get back there, but um, that'd be somewhere I'd like to go, yeah. Deadly, yeah. And uh, when it comes to training them with the three of you, who's most likely to kill the other one? You're all smiling, <laughs> going, I'm not saying, I'm not saying anyone. <laughs> I'm going to go with Adele. <laughs> okay. Oh, if it's first off the bat. <laughs> okay, so Adele, you're, you're being picked out here as the, as the vicious one in training, so. I'm vicious. That's terrible. 
Yeah. I didn't say vicious. Competitive, <laughs> <laughs> competitive, we'll say. Competitive. Okay. That's good. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah, that's uh, that sounds good. The last question I ask everyone before the quick fire round, it's the most vital of all the questions. Uh, Avian, have you ever won anything in uh, the club lotto? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Okay. That's a straight, a straight answer. Clean, have you ever won anything? Nope. Nope. Adele for a hat trick. Have I what? Ever won anything in the club lotto? No. no. <laughs> Nobody. No. None of you have won anything. Jeez. No. Nothing at no, all. No, everyone's the club lotto. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, no, I've, I've asked everyone. I've had a, the highlights so far were one of the lads has voted the best seller, won the girls, won a sheep, and uh, <laughs> Zach, yeah, Zach Maradi uh, won four and a half grand in his one Dublin. So that's uh, they're my three highest so far. So it's just been a list of no, 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 right up to the sheep and then the four and a half grand. So, uh, yeah, it still haven't haven't had anyone beat the sheep yet. That's my favorite one so far. So, uh, if you're uh, if you're not in a Russia trivia, try the the quick fire round. Um, if you're interested in having a go, it's all GA related mostly. Um, you'd have to give out about each other or anything. So it, there's there's no panic in this one. So, uh, if you're happy to have a go, uh, clean. I'll start with you down the corner. I'll give you Dale a break uh, for a couple of minutes. So, uh, clean I'll, up. Have, I'll have a go. Mine. Lovely, <laughs> lovely. <laughs> uh, Kleena, what's your, the, your favorite ground you've ever played on? Um, um, Avi and Adele, you get the same questions now, so you get the advantage here. So, oh, they get to think about it. Yeah, you're the um, guinea pig here, Kleena. I can't think of anywhere we've played. Um, what about, I like Dr. Cullen. The... Say, what about Tinry Land? <laughs> <laughs> That's a decent pitch, to be fair. I actually don't play on it very often, though. so Okay, I'll take that, Dr. Cullen. So, what's your least favorite ground? Uh, least favorite ground, um, the outside pitch. <laughs> the outside pitch. I've had a lot of people saying the outside pitches of places. Yeah, uh, short kick out or long kick out? Long. Long. Uh, as a supporter, would you prefer the tea and ham sandwiches or the pre-match pub? Oh, um, pre-match pub. Pre-match pub. Uh, you have a choice of one: hats, flags, scarves, or headbands. Hats. Hats. Marty or Des. Marty. Marty, okay. Uh, your favourite pundit on any sport, male or female? Um, Joe Brawley. Joe Brawley, he's come up a few times. Uh, <laughs> it does wetting herself at the top there. Uh, the funniest, funniest, strangest or worst thing that's ever been shouted at you from a sideline, that could be by a supporter or a manager or a teammate. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, no, I can't pass, do anything. Pass on that one. So, um, if there was a GA transfer market in the morning, who's the one player you'd buy in for Carlo? Ooh. Ooh. Um, Amy Mackin. Okay, good shout. Uh, are you studs or moles? Um, depends on the day, but on the day. usually moles. Okay, uh, your favourite boots? Uh, coppers. Okay, uh, sweeper or no sweeper? Or how many sweepers do you need? Oh my god! <laughs> I ask, I ask everyone that because the Galway lads, uh, when they came on, there was a big argument over how many sweepers the cornerback uh, they needed to replace the cornerback when he went wandering up the pitch. So that's why I always ask how many sweepers are needed. Uh, just the one sweeper. Just the one. Okay. Uh, your favorite sport outside of GA? Uh, soccer. Soccer. Uh, uh, best holiday? You've, you've kind of mentioned. Well, we've any other place apart from Bally Further. Uh, well, I went skiing in Switzerland when I was younger. Nice. That was a great holiday. Cool. And the tough. Skiing. Yeah, uh, I haven't actually done it. I'm dying to, dying to see what it's like. The uh, the million dollar question in your lifetime, who has been the best GA player? Um, best GA player. Hmm. Um, it's a good question. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, I told you it's a quick fire round, but it's not that quick fire. <laughs> Oh, I answered most of them fairly quickly. Yeah, you did it fairly, um, yeah. You're a lot quicker than a lot of people have been so far. Uh, greatest GA player. Um, Avian is over there going, thank God I wasn't first. She's like desperately thinking here. <laughs> yeah, I really do the short straw here. Yeah. Um, I can come back to you if you want time to think. Yeah, I'm going to think okay. about that one, sorry. Oh, right, that'll do. Uh, Avian, same ones to you. So uh, your favourite ground? Um, I'd probably pick my home pitch, show, Lachlan. Okay. Uh, worst ground? Um, definitely the outside pitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, short kick out or long kick out? Long. Long. Uh, the tea and ham sandwiches or the pre-match pub? 
probably the pre-match bug with cleaner. Okay, good yeah. stuff. <laughs> um, hats, flags, scars, or headbands? Hat. Hat. Uh, Marty or Des? Marty. Your favorite pundit, any sport, male or female? Uh, Colin O'Rourke. O'Rourke, okay. Yeah, I, I can't ever speak to him again, I'm afraid, after something that happened before. So, uh, what's the funniest, strangest, or worst yeah. thing that's ever been shouted at you from the sideline? Um, it's very hard to think of anything off the top of my head. Probably anything my dad's ever said to me. <laughs> okay, take, we'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, if there was a GA transfer market in the morning, um, who would you bring in for Carlo to replace Kleena? <clears throat> <laughs> Um, Sinead Goldrick. Sinead Goldrick, good shout. Okay. Um, your favorite boots? Fuck my one, Amy. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> you can take it too. <laughs> um, also Copa, um, Copas. Okay. Cool. Uh, studs or moles? Moles. Moles. Uh, sweeper, no sweeper. How many sweepers do you want? Um, no sweeper. No sweeper. Good <laughs> We're shout. for fifteen. <laughs> good stuff. I like that. Yeah. Uh, favorite sport outside the GA? Basketball. Basketball. Um. Best holiday? Uh, Australia. Australia, yeah, definitely agree with that. And in your lifetime, who has been the best GA player? Um, probably a obvious answer, but I'm going to go with Brian Fenton from the, even though he's player of the year this year, but yeah. Um, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, I take that. Yeah, good answers. Yeah. And Didel, you get the, the easy one have been last. So uh, your favourite ground? Dr. Cullen. Dr. Cullen. Uh, least favourite ground? Outside pitch. <laughs> I'm trying to get a picture of this outside pitch. Uh, the short kick out or the long kick out? Oh, short. Short. Uh, the tea and ham sandwiches or the pre-match pub? Oh, I'll meet the girls in the pub. Good stuff. Uh, the hats, flags, <laughs> hats, flags, scars or headbands? My oh, headband. Headband. Uh, Marty or Des? Marty. Uh, Favourite pundit on telly in any sport? Um, just say the fits count. Oh, he does, yeah. Oh yeah, Davey is my Davey. main man. He is good stuff. I'll take him. Uh, the funniest, strangest, or weirdest thing that's ever been shouted at you from the sideline could have been Ava's dad. Could have been Ava's dad shouting at you now as well. So, um, probably that one's whitewashed off the pitch. Don't be biting her. Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. Uh, if there was a GA transfer market in the morning, who would you buy in to replace Cleaner or Avian? Uh, Sinead Goldrick. Sinead Goldrick as well. Uh, your favorite boots. Um, the Adidas Predator. Okay. Uh, studs or moles? Uh, moles. Moles. Sweeper, no sweeper? No sweeper. Uh, favorite sport outside the GA? Um, athletics. Cool. Uh, your best holiday? Is it still Texas? Um, probably Texas or Philadelphia. I was in Philadelphia there. Was it last year or the year before? Not last year, the year before. Cool. And that was good. Deadly. And the million dollar one before I come back to Kleena, who's clearly got her answer now, who's the best GA player ever in your lifetime? Oh, God. Who did I use to watch for? I'm trying to think now. Um, you may come back to I'll me. I'll come back that. to you. Okay, Kleena, who was your one? So you've had ages to think now. So putting on the spot. I'm going to stick with Colin Cooper. Go stick with the Gooch. Okay. Most skillful. Yeah, most skillful. Yeah. Class player. Deadly. Okay, so we've had two good ones. See, Del. Give you the give you time, don't worry, plenty of time. You can pick yourself now if you want. Okay, yeah, myself so <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we got a I'll pick a girl. I'll pick a girl then. Okay. Uh Breeze Corker. Corker. Yeah. Breach Corker. Okay. Breach Corker is <laughs> okay, deadly. Breach Corkery, Brian Fenton, and the Gooch. Quite a quite a mix. Um, before I uh, before I let you go, is there any other uh, celebration stories or anything I've missed out on that? Uh, I feel there's loads more to that London story, which you're just like, oh, you don't want to say it. Someone will kill us if we say it. Loads, so I'm. I'm <laughs> hey, Vina, clean. Have I missed anything before I finish up? No, not that I know of. Anyway. Oh, okay, grand. That's right. No, I just. The way the Westmead one and a few other ones turned into like therapy sessions at the end where they just started, uh, you know, outing their emotions on each other before uh, before they left. So uh, I just said a better check with everyone that I haven't missed any uh, any good stories. But um, yeah, girls, like, thanks so much for for coming on your your stars. Uh, I sorry about the Internet as well. It's a standard thing here in Mullingar that it comes and goes when it feels like as well. And uh, I hope when uh, oh, that was the door. your door fell off, uh, the door. Yeah, I'm telling you, there didn't put enough, didn't put enough screws in that door, and I put it off. That that was the problem. So, um, 
Yeah, no, look, thanks a million for coming on. You're very good and uh, giving up some of your evening. And uh, I hope when things eventually go back to normal that uh, we'll see you out, on the, out in the football pitch again. I have to learn my pronunciations of uh, Carlo Towns anyway. That's the first thing I need to do. I, I know that much. So, uh, but yeah, um, thanks so much for coming on. And uh, I'll keep in touch with you. And uh, I hope all is well down in Carlo and, and in Dublin. And uh, I'll chat to you again soon, hopefully. So, yeah, thanks mind yourselves. You. Yeah, thanks so much for coming on. Mind yourselves. For having us. Yeah, take it easy. Good luck. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mind yourselves. Breaking tradition this week on the Loaf of Bread GA podcast. You don't have to wait until next week for the next slice, as this Sunday at 9am, we have a special episode with this man. But John is a very talented fella. No matter what he put his, put his uh, hand to, it was um, a turn to gold. He was just whatever he decides yeah. to do. Um, I remember one, once uh, we were playing, it was the infant days of the internet, but... Um, <laughs> I think it was all coming out two, I think, and we were uh, we played Dublin in a um, Leinster final, and I think whatever sponsor ran a man of the match online competition. Okay. And uh, John rings me up and says, "Oh, I see you're nominated for man of the match," and I said, "Oh, am I?" So, I, so when I turned on the computer, on the screen was um, could be Jason Sherlock had twenty percent, Alan Brogan had whatever. 60% and here was me just a small little <laughs> small little colour on the, on the bar Jared. but he says hold on watch this and all of a sudden then I could see poor old Alan Brogan going one way and I was going the other way <laughs> so he was able to get into the system and so that's Brilliant. the sort of lad he is so, you know bit of a messer uh, actually a big bit of a messer but and so for the double episode it is in fact the icon himself Kildare and Alamud legend Johnny Doyle we each had everything from the influence of his father Harry playing for and against the great Mick O'Dwyer, training under Kieran McGuinney, playing under 21 against Westmeath, the incredible story of the 2004 Alamo Championship win and the famous wedding, and two things you might not expect to hear. How he won a Man of the Match award in 2002 by some technical magic from his friend, and his interaction with the junior infants in Gale School at High. And then one last thing, his own explanation of how he thinks he got the iconic silver hair all those years ago. Just the tip of the iceberg of stories. You could honestly listen to this man all day long. That's the Loaf of Bread special episode this Sunday from 9am. Until then, I'll leave you with these famous words from the great Gerlach Nan. Yeah, it's pure constipated hurling, you know. But they're just absolutely, <laughs> you know, they're so inhibited in everything they do, you know. Slonagy.